Good morning, and welcome to this third Sunday of Easter as we continue to proclaim the resurrection of Jesus Christ over sin, death, and the power of the devil. When we're recording this, we were about 200 deaths, I mean not 200 deaths, oh my goodness, 200 people have tested positive for COVID, you know, here at the JBS plant, and by the time you see this, more people might have tested positive, even more than that. And so there's this right so much more uncertainty in our community, but I just want everybody right now to take a deep breath. And I'm, I'm not kidding, take a deep breath right now. And know that Jesus is here. Jesus is certainty. Jesus' promises are here for you this day as we come together and worship, and you are going to be blessed by him this day. There are so many things in this world that are uncertain, but this worship and this word of God is certain. If you're following at home with a hymnal, we'll be using Divine Service, cha- um, Divine Service 3, setting 3, and so on um, page 184 in the front of the hymnal, and we'll begin our worship by singing 465, Now All the Vault of Heaven Resound. <laughs> beginning this day in the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart, and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this your confession of our virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. In the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, 
I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God on high, and on earth His good will toward man. We praise Thee, we bless Thee, we worship Thee. We glorify Thee, we give thanks to Thee for Thy great glory. O Lord God, have make of your Son, you raised up the fallen world. Grant your faithful people rescued from the peril of everlasting death, perpetual gladness, and eternal joys. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Continue with our readings. This lesson according to Acts chapter 2. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and addressed the crowd. Therefore let all Israel be assured of this, God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and your children, and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. With many other words, he warned them, and he pleaded with them, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted this message were baptized, and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Epistle Lesson according to 1 Peter chapter 1. Since you call on a father who judges each man's work impartially, live your lives as strangers here in reverent fear. For you know that it was not with perishable things such as silver or gold that you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you from your forefathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. He was chosen before the creation of the world, but was revealed in these last times for your sake. 
Through him you believe in God, who raised him from the dead and glorified him, and so your faith and hope are in God. Now that you have purified yourselves by obeying the truth, so that you have sincere love for your brothers, love one another deeply from the heart. For you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and the enduring word of God. For all men are like grass, and all their glory is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers and the flowers fall, but the word of the Lord stands forever. And this is the word that was preached to you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to St. Luke, the 24th chapter. Glory be to thee, o Lord. Now the same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them, but they were kept from recognizing him. He asked them, What are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, asked him, Are you only a visitor to Jerusalem and do not know the things that have happened there in these days? What things, he asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed, before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but didn't find his body. They came and told us that he had, they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the woman had said, but him they did not see. He said to them, How foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all the prophets have spoken. Did not the Christ have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And begin with Moses and all the prophets... He explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus acted as if he was going further. But they urged him strongly, Stay with us, for it is nearly evening. The day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognized him, and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven and those with them assembled together and saying, It is true, the Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. And the two told what had happened on the way, and how Jesus was recognized by them when he broke the bread. This is the gospel of the Lord. We continue confessing our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, 
the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. At this time, if there's any children with you watching the services, I invite you, especially now, to have them tune in as Roxy has a special message for them. Well, good morning, everybody. Um, I brought along something to help us think about our lesson today about those disciples on the road to Emmaus when Jesus presented and walked him walked himself alongside of them, but they didn't recognize him. So to help us think about that a little bit more, I brought along, and, I'm, and if you can't see it here, um, it will be on our website along with um, our children's bulletin for today. So you guys make sure that you go on. But I'm sure that some of you have seen this like um, color by number. And until you color it in, you can't really see what it is. It's kind of like a blur. That was kind of like our disciples today. They really didn't, they saw Jesus, but really didn't know who he was, even though, even though the prophets had, um, had shared about that Jesus would be suffering, dying, and raising, raising again. So as the disciples were walking, they didn't know. And as the disciples invited Jesus to break bread or to eat with them, their eyes were opened, and they, got, they knew well, this was Jesus. And, and so this is kind of the picture we have before of not knowing, and here is our picture of what it was. And it's a butterfly, so when you guys color it, you'll see that. But, you know, in our world today, sometimes our vision is kind of blurred. Our, we... We go in a world that there's so much confusion going on right now. There's a lot of fear going on. And then sometimes that clouds our, our vision and our, and our thoughts about what's happening in the world. But, you know, we just know that even though all of this is happening, Jesus walks alongside of us. We know. We know who Jesus is. Scripture tells us, and through the work of the Holy Spirit, we can believe in our hearts that Jesus is with us even during these sad, confusing, scary times. We can have joy and we can have that sure assurance of peace within him. My prayer for you today is that you would always know that Jesus walks with you and that he loves you. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, we thank you for being with us, even though sometimes um, we don't always understand what's happening. We can always know with certain hope that you are with us and that you love us. And all God's children say, amen. We'll continue with the singing of the next hymn, 474. Jesus is risen. 
risen and we shall arise. Give God the glory, alleluia. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God, our Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Our gospel lesson for today, this is a big day for Jesus. This is Easter Sunday. So I would think it would be a pretty big day for Jesus, right? He has just risen from the dead. He has just conquered sin, death, and the power of the devil. I think it's probably a pretty busy day for Jesus. I'm guessing he had lots of things that he wanted to attend to. But on this Easter day, from the Gospel of Luke, we find that Jesus spends time with Cleopas. Now, raise your hand at home if you know who Cleopas is. Probably not. He's not named before this. He's not named after this. And there's another disciple walking to Emmaus, and we'll just call him Mr. No-Name Disciple because he's not even named. And they're walking from Jerusalem to Emmaus, which is, in our text says is a seven-mile journey. Now, I did a little math before this. If you're kind of walking at a leisurely pace, you can walk a mile, about 15 to 20 um, minutes. And, and I'm thinking that's a leisurely pace because they're discussing, they're talking about things. I'm sure they're pausing. They're not power walking this from Jerusalem to Emmaus because they're pondering, they're sad, and they're glum. And so if they're walking seven miles from Jerusalem to Emmaus, it's probably about two and a half hours they're walking. And plus, you know, they spend some time. Jesus goes into the house. He doesn't just say, see you later. He goes into the house too. So on Easter Day, which is a very busy day for Jesus, <laughs> he spends a big chunk of it with Cleopas, who you have, you have no idea who he is, and Mr. No-Name Disciple, who we don't know who he is. But yet, he decides to spend a big chunk of that first Easter with these two guys. And I think that's very important. There's a very much a theological point that God and Jesus are making in that statement. It kind of goes along with the same point in that it was women who first saw Jesus when he arose from the dead. Because in that culture, in that time, a woman did not count as a witness to anything. A woman could not go to court, and her testimony would have counted for nothing. It's not by accident that Jesus uses women at the tomb for his first witnesses of his resurrection. I think it's the same point, these two named disciples. But before we get into that point, before we dig deeper into that theological insight for us this day, as I mentioned earlier, and you know, there's been almost 200 cases of positive COVID-19 at JBS in our community, and I'm sure time you hear this message, that number is going to be much higher. And so that just means much more uncertainty for our community, right, and for our town for the next month, two months, whatever. We don't know when things will open up. We don't know when things will return to normal. We don't know what that means if there's going to be more deaths in our county because of this. We just don't know so much right now. There's so much uncertainty, and that continues to happen. And when we have this unroutine, this uncertainty of life, it just wears on people. It wears on me. I see it wear on my family. I mean, it's just this up and down, this roller coaster ride that we're on affects our economy so much, our ag economy, in so many different ways. And I know a lot of people are worrying right now today with so much more uncertainty. Besides this COVID-19 uncertainty that it's brought upon us, there's always another uncertainty, though, that I think that has always lies under the surface that we need to talk about. And that's the uncertainty of do you really know where you stand with certain people in life? It's like, I think they like me. I think they respect me. I think they love me. I think they want me around. But yet, sometimes I'm not all that certain 
are sure. And we can even have that kind of up and down with people who are really close to. It's like, I thought you're supposed to love me. I thought you're supposed to respect me. But yet, where do I stand with you? And there, there's a, it happens, you know, early in life. And even elementary and junior high. Just think about going back to elementary and junior high. And like, am I in with the in group? Do they like me or they don't like me? Or do I, do I have a standing here? Or one day I'm liked, the other day I'm, I'm, I'm not liked. And it's this up and down. And it starts early. And you can remember those days of junior high and high school. And none of us would like to ever go back to those days because of that fact. But yeah, it continues throughout life, too. It's like, where do I stand with people? Am, am I respected? Am I liked? Am I wanted here? And you see, when that uncertainty, when that insecurity plays in our lives, it feeds into so many different things. That can feed into anxiety and depression. And the people who ultimately take their own lives and suicide the thing that they can't answer at the very end, I don't think I matter to anybody. If I'm here or not here, I don't think it really matters. And they fool themselves into the lie. It's a complete lie. But that's where this type of thinking ultimately ends. If you don't, can't answer this question, do I matter to somebody? Does somebody care? Cleopas, he's no Peter, he's no James, he's no John. I don't see Cleopas on the Mount of Transfiguration with that inner circle, but he's on Easter. This Mr. No-Name Disciple, he's no Andrew, he's no Philip, he's no Matthew. He's not listed with any of the other apostles in our Gospels as they do and go out the name of Jesus. But on this Easter, Jesus at least spends, I would say, three hours with these, doing the math, three hours with these no-named, nobody disciples. And there's something, a strong message in that for you and for me this day. Jesus doesn't show up to these disciples and say, hey, here's, here, look at, no marks, yep, they're here. But look, I'm raised from the dead. See you later. Goodbye. He doesn't brush them off. He spends time with them. He's invested in their lives. He walks with them slowly. He gets and he addresses their fears and he gets into Scripture. And he talks about this Jesus himself in Scripture and so that they can understand it for themselves. And he takes time to go into their home and break bread with them. And these two nobodies, Cleopas and Mr. No-Name Disciple, feel loved by Jesus, even though they don't know it's Jesus at this time. They feel accepted. They feel like somebody's invested into them. And when Jesus finally reveals himself to them, their hearts are on fire. And said, man, were our hearts burning inside of us when he was talking to us? Isn't that great? Wasn't that wonderful? Because he had invested in them. There will always be a seat at God's table for each and every one of us. That's the first foundational thing that we have to remember in times of uncertainty, in times where our security has been robbed from us in so many different ways. The foundational thing that this text is telling each and every one of us, there's always a seat for each and every one of us at God's table. And nothing can take that away from us. I'm an okay pastor, but I'm no Andy Stanley. I'm an okay pastor, but I'm no Dr. Lucas Woodford, who is our district president, and that's okay. I don't have to be Andy Stanley. I don't have to be Dr. Lucas Woodford because there's going to be a place for me at God's table. There will always be a place for me in his presence, 
no matter who I am, what station of life that I am, there's always going to be a place for me because it doesn't depend on my performance. It doesn't depend on who I am and what I've done or can do. Jesus just comes and walks beside us and loves us just because he loves you. And you can't forget that. He just loves you. There was no by accident that he came to two no-named Cleopas and Mr. No-Named Disciple and walked beside them at Easter. He loves us all. One of the greatest gifts that you can give, one of the best things that you can do with your life right now, when there's so much insecurity, so much uncertainty that floats around us in this world, the number one thing that you can do right now is you go tell somebody how much you value them, how much you love them, how much you need them in your life, how much your life would be so much poorer for the fact if they were not in your life. Because as you've been given security by your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the greatest gift that you can give somebody in this world right now is a little bit of security. And let them know that they'll always have a place in your life at your table. That no matter what they've done or where they've gone, you'll love them. I tell you what, when we know that, when we have the security that we have in Christ Jesus as he walks beside us, and we can feel that security and love around us from others, you can face COVID-19. You can face quarantine. You can face economic uncertainty. You can face it all, and you can, you can look it straight in the eye. If you have the underlying security of love and acceptance, if you have the underlying foundation of love and acceptance, you can face it all. We live in times, and it's going to be crazy yet, let's face it, it's going to be crazy times yet for us for a while. But you're loved. Jesus desires to walk beside you, come beside you, live with you. Desires to break bread that you might see his presence of love and forgiveness in your life. He desires to be your God, to give you security even if you don't feel it from anybody else in this world, and nobody else comes beside you today or tomorrow or the next day and tells you how much you're loved, he will. Share the gift. Share that gift. Find somebody. Maybe it might be even somebody that you wouldn't even think about sharing that with right now. It'll be a gift to them in their life, too. Amen. We come together now in the prayers of the church. Heavenly Father, our hearts have burned in us, O Lord, as your word has been read and preached. Keep our faith from growing cold and grant us grace. We may not waver in faith or succumb to temptation. Give to us, to our children, receptive hearts that we may hear and hearing believe and believing be steadfast in faith and hope all of our days. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You have cleansed us, O Lord, with water in the word and baptism. You have marked us as your own people. Give to us grace that we may live out this faith in holy lives, lifting up your name in word and works for as long as we live. Guide us that we may purify our souls by living in obedience to your word, in brotherly and sisterly love for one another. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guard our nation, O Lord, that we may enjoy peace and security in the face of threat and danger. Bless Donald, our president, the Congress of the United States. Bless Timothy, our governor, and all the state and local officials, that they may fulfill their office faithfully. Bless the members of the armed forces to protect us and teach the nations the way of peace. Lord, in your mercy, 
Hear our prayer. Deliver us from all of our afflictions and grant us strength to bear all of our burdens, O Lord. Hear us in particular for Donna, Shirley, Bill, and Tim, Bing, Steve, and Dennis, and those now we name in our hearts. According to your gracious will, heal the sick, relieve those who suffer, and comfort the grieving, and give peace to the dying. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we place all these things in your hands. Trust in your goodness and mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We continue to gather the gifts that God has so blessed us with and so freely give back to him. Join in the prayer our Lord taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you in favor and give you peace. Amen. We conclude with our final hymn, 478, the day of resurrection. Let 